You know what sound that is, folks. You betcha it's another noon whistle. I'm Chris Trottier, and I'm going solo as a host. Mr. John Anzalone's on the disabled list today, but we are excited to welcome back for, I think, the fourth time, Mr. Yep. John Handel, the economics teacher, and more importantly, the athletic director at Elkhorn Area High School and, live, and resident. John, I think this puts you in front of Chris Clapper. This is your fourth attempt. We're going to, have to get you a jacket or some acknowledgement. I, I think so. I think that would be great. I'm interested. I'm curious, though, why Lake Geneva Badger alum are leading the charge here. Like yeah, we represent that, you know, early to mid 80s group really well around Elkhorn. <laughs> We probably should change our music when you guys come on to, you know, like maybe play a little uh, early 80s, like, you know, yeah. 80s pop. But we're not here to reminisce. We got a short amount of time to cover a lot. Happy New Year to everybody. We're entering 2025 with a lot of excitement in the athletic department. So, John, let's do kind of a mid-year recap. Like, what do you... Sure. What are some highlights? What are you most excited about moving into the new, the new year? Let's kind of uh, touch base on that a little bit. Review that. Well, we had uh, a pretty successful fall campaign. And once again, um, we're measuring our success by more than just things on the scoreboard, but the, you know, from a, from the vantage point of just keeping score, cause they do keep score in these things. <laughs> um, we were SLC champs this fall in girls, tennis and boys soccer. Um, he had two singles players and one doubles team make it to state in tennis, girls tennis. I believe there were 26 kids who were uh, all conference selection in fall sports. I know our esports team finished second in the state um, in their fall season. And, and, and that, you know, there's a lot more than just that, but those are some of the things that I just thought of right off the top of my head. Well, yeah, and if, if I'm not mistaken, a little shout out to Coach Galani and his crew. They made the playoffs. Is that correct? Yep, they made the playoffs. We also had the uh, privilege of hosting a level four playoff game uh, between Blackhawk and Reedsville. That was pretty successful. Also hosted uh, sectional finals in girls volleyball. I know Burlington won, and then in boys soccer, Union Grove won. So we had an opportunity to host uh, quite a few things. I can run through real quickly uh, the kids who got all conference, if you don't mind me doing that. Yeah, no, I love that. Let's okay. celebrate that. Eight, so we'll start with football. Aiden yeah. Olson, Ethan Nergi, Josiah Nelson, Miles Gunderson, um, Wyatt Texador. Nathaniel Langdon, George Rentas, girls volleyball, Kyron Lyle, Jenna Heinzelman, girls golf, Kate Crockless, um, girls cross country, Grace Woyak, um, boys cross country, Miguel Luna, another girls runner, Isla Flath, boys soccer, once again, conference champs, as was girls tennis, Owen Backus, Jack Jacobs, Carter Jorgalis, Nick Barkus, Aaron Schumer, um, Charlotte Meyer, girls tennis, Alexandria Trost, girls tennis, Lauren Krober, Peyton Williams, girls tennis, all four of those girls also made it to state. Ella Wallace and Paige Nelson were all conference, as were Annie Murphy and Lola Gerard. And I think that's everybody. You know, so th that's amazing. I mean, I, and I know that, you know, from an athletic standpoint, there's more than just as you talked about the scoreboard and wins and losses. That's where everybody gravitates to. You mentioned um, hosting events, you know, for the WIA. Talk a little bit about why. I mean, that's a lot of work. It's a, you're, a lot of manpower. Talk a little bit why you continue yeah. to pursue those I think I, I think I think good question I think it's the right work um, and I think it's the right thing to do I know people in Elkhorn love to come out and watch those games I do think it helps our program because like in volleyball and in soccer in particular if our teams would have advanced that far we would have hosted now they may have moved the games off of our sites different sports for the WIA have different rules about who can host um, all the way up to sectional finals and things like that so uh, I enjoy going to the games myself. I know when we were asked at the last minute to host that football game, we happily did that. So, you know, we are a good steward to the WIA, and, and I'm obviously very involved with the WIA, and I've enjoyed that work, and I think it's the right work, as I had mentioned before. So we do it because I think it's the right thing to do. I know a lot of other schools around this area 
choose to not take on that responsibility. We have plenty of good help and a lot of workers and people who want to come out to those games and the facilities to back all that up. So with manpower facilities and, and a willingness to do it, you know, that's why we do it. Well, and you're bringing in, you know, from a, there's another side to this. You're bringing in people into your community. You're recognizing, celebrating your 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 district facilities, which are obviously a, a big part of our community. Um, yeah. Hopefully, our local employers are getting, you know, a little bit more um, patronage uh, at their local establishments. So, I, yeah, it's and just you know, a, that's all. That's all part of that alignment. I mean, we want to yeah. get the whole community aligned with everything that we do here. Uh, we talk about that a lot with our coaches. And and once again, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I do think that that alignment and helping out everybody else is, is kind of why we do this. Well, I think the other thing you didn't talk about, and we won't go there because we only have a short amount of time, is, you know, what, what we don't talk about, maybe this is a future episode, is besides athletics, there's a whole other side to the co-curricular and getting kids opportunity to access and engagement, which we can talk about at a later time. And I know you're involved in that. Let's let's dig a little bit into, I know you went to the fall a little bit. Obviously, you're in the throes of the winter season. And for those people who don't realize how busy it is at Elkhorn, um, Elkhorn's one of the few districts, at least maybe the only one in our conference, that has swimming, gymnastics, wrestling, girls, boys, basketball, without co-ops and without standalone co-op. and host the events. Without. So, I mean, that's a unique celebrate celebration, and that brings a lot of work for everybody involved. Yeah, Talk well, it, it shows how- it shows that we have great participation rate of our kids. We have yeah. to have a standalone in a lot of those sports when a lot of other schools in our conference are already co-oping. I don't, uh, Waterford is a standalone in gymnastics. I think they're the only one. Everybody else is co-op based. Uh, pretty much everybody, uh, boys swimming, I know Badger is a co-op. Um, some of the other schools in our conference, like Delavan is still in our conference for swimming. They're not, but a lot of schools are going the co-op route. Um, right now we're choosing not to although we've had some opportunities to do that. Um, and we will be co oping with three other schools when lacrosse starts. I know that's one of the things that I'm most looking forward to um, seeing this spring because it's it's obviously new to Elkhorn, but we'll be co oping in lacrosse with Badger and Delavan and Williams Bay. So give us a little update on, the, uh, on how the winter season's going. I think our seasons are all going well. I think as you go through them, um, we've had a lot of um, people around a lot of home events so far, but, uh, you know, gymnastics won a big invitational up at Sun Prairie. Uh, the swim team won their own invite for the first time in, I think, 10 or 11 years. I know our wrestling team is uh, b- rebuilding their numbers back up and have hosted quite a bit. Had a big JV invite here right before Christmas that had a lot of people and a lot of kids did really well. And then our boys and girls, uh, basketball teams are off to pretty good starts. Uh, girls have one loss in the conference. And the boys have just a couple. So um, a lot of really good things going on and a lot of fun to watch. Uh, those coaches try to build culture within their programs. So obviously there's a lot of excitement in Wisconsin. We kind of hunker down and enjoy our local community sports. And there's a lot of celebrations there. Talk to me a little bit, because I know this has been in the news locally, you know, within our conference, but also um, you know, around the state and nationally, talk a little bit about the state of officiating in winter sports. Uh, you know, talk a little basketball. Um, how's it been? Have you had success identifying officials? And maybe share a little bit about the process you go through and why you do that. Well, I, I you just have to remember if we don't have officials, we don't have team sports. <laughs> I mean, it's really that simple. We need to do more to support our officials and referees. I know Alcorn has an officiating class that's run in the third trimester. Um, Mr. Prince is teaching it this year. Uh, We would love to have more high school kids or just out of high school kids officiate. I know that there's a youth basketball tournament tomorrow here in Elkhorn and there's some youth kids officiating. So it's really as simple as getting started is signing up with the WIA and just uh, getting an athletic director signature and getting uh, yourself connected to the right people to get you um, access to games. We have a good network of officials in most sports here in Elkhorn. We don't have a ton of football officials. I believe there are two licensed officials in, in Elkhorn. So if you think about a town our size, we have two licensed football officials in our community. So if you're a young kid who played high school football and is looking to like stay connected. There's a chance to move up very, very quickly because just the lack of officials. So 
Um, what are some things that you know we can all do? I, I think our coaches do a really good job of setting the tone here for the most part and leading by example. Nobody's perfect, um, but technical fouls are unneeded. Um, you're modeling appropriate behavior. I know you and I had got a chance to watch some basketball last week and, and saw just the coaches that have the most success oftentimes are modeling the right behavior. They're not spending their whole time you know, worrying about stuff that they don't have any control over, putting the doubt in your own kids on your own team about how the officials are doing doesn't help either. Um, I think our parents for the most part um, are awesome, but you know, we want to limit the excuses for your child um, and control you be a role model for your kid and how you handle things. Um, when you criticize officials, you are teaching your kids to blame, complain, and not take responsibility for anything. Um, that isn't a great message to send. So I think our athletes, for the most part, are in the, the same position. Um, they should also remember that um, you know, they, they want to follow the right lead, you know, gestures and taunting and you know, acknowledgement of people in the student section isn't awesome, isn't an awesome way to go either. So um, well, when you blame an official, when you blame an official, you deflect responsibility. And, and I, and I think that, you know, a lot of those people should step up and get involved and become officials. And I know that th there will be a point here where they don't have enough officials. The numbers, the supply and demand of this thing are, are way out of whack. And, and as far as the pay for them goes, you can make yeah. a lot more money just doing you stuff. I think you just got to find your comfort zone and, and do it because you like doing it and you want to give a little bit back to the game. But, you know, I think for the most part, um, most of the time, fan behavior is good and coach behavior is good. But, you know, obviously people can see what's going on and it, it's all over newspapers and things like that. When it's not good behavior by coaches or parents or athletes, it, it really sticks out like a sore thumb. Well, I also think, you know, that everybody needs to realize and, and you and I have been, you know, around a while together, you know, over 50 years in the education I, two things always stick out to me when it comes to officials. One, I've never seen an official after hearing from a parent, a student organization, or student group, or a coach say, you know what, you're right. I'm going to go back and change that call. Right. Right. That's number one. So it really doesn't have that big of an, it never has an impact. And I think the second thing is everybody needs to be mindful of is officials talk. Oh, yeah. Officials talk, and if you're the the player, the team, the the organization, school district, where maybe officials don't feel appreciated or welcome, you're going to have a harder time getting really good official officials. Yeah, and there, yeah. then it starts this cycle of just conflict. Yeah, and I think there are some officials around that once the word gets out about how they're being treated by student sections or parents or coaches of those teams who just choose to not work there. It, and, and it can be, they can be picky about places they want to go because unfortunately um, there's not enough of them. So yeah. I, I just think we, we should do more and we need to do more to support them and make them feel welcome. And um, you know, we can all be better. John. So I'm going to, you, you talked about last week when we went up to the Rick Majerus classic and, and saw the De Piers who are, what were they last year? 33 and 0 or whatever the record was. I think they've won 39 in a row now. Yeah, they got multiple D1 players. Like, let's just talk, you know, obviously time goes quick. And we want to get to our New Year's resolutions coming up. But what do you think, like, when you look at, if you were to list, and this is probably going to be a challenge, top three ingredients, when you look at those programs and they continue to have success, what do you think the top three ingredients, and if you want to go to five, that's fine, of a really successful either athletic program like sport or overall program? Sure. Awesome question. Um, I would say alignment with youth programming. I would say a mission and vision from the top down that everybody's on. This is what we're doing and this is when we're doing it. And this is how we're doing it. And that philosophy just reeks of their whole program. Like when are you going to A and B teams? Are you not going to A and B teams? And then I would say competition for spots um, in terms of the more competition, the more it's going to bring out uh, 
people playing better. I think that helps as well. But those are things, you know, like just simple alignment issues, I think, is where ultimately this stuff all heads. So you had mentioned DePierre. If you watch them play, their coach spends no time on um, <laughs> worrying about officials. He just coaches his kids. And, and the things he says are not just like play harder or anything like that. He's very specific about what he's asking them to do. And but I but I would say he's probably pretty actively involved in the mission and vision and alignment in his program. And I know that sounds a little preachy, but I, I think that the kids in their program, you can just tell how first class they are. They are not going to spend any time worrying about officials. And then they do things and play the right way. And I think the really good programs have all figured out what that secret sauce is. And that secret sauce includes all those things. Yeah. I'm curious as to what you think about that one. No, I I, I think, you know, when, when we watching those programs up there, you know, and I'm not going to, you know, De Pere stuck out. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought Brookfield Central stuck out. Um, uh, I even thought the, you know, Marshfield stuck out. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there was a clear difference. You can just tell the culture level of discipline and accountability within a program because some things just don't need to be said those guys didn't talk to officials they their eyes always went to their coach not into the stands yeah um after the games they kept their shirts tucked in they all said good games they they, they never acknowledged the officials and i think the other thing is those kids are all really strong yeah they're really strong. And I know you've done everything in your power to, you know, increase that investment in our athletic program. But these kids, I, I think back to some of those Onalaska kids where we're sitting there with a group of uh, the legends in Wisconsin sports. And they're like, yeah, that kid was a all state football player. Yeah, and he came he out and just moved like an athlete and his his arms and his athletically. I, I think that's the, the last piece that I saw. Yeah, I like that too because I think that once again, as as we preach, whoops, as right. we preach that specialization um, piece becomes more and more of an issue. Two and three sport athletes. So if you're not the best sport, if this isn't your best sport, can you still have some you know ability to help out other sports? Um, and there's a lot of those stories, but that I think goes back to the culture piece. I know I coached in the WBCA All Star team, and one kid was telling me how he went out for baseball and he hadn't played much. And I said to him, why'd you go out? He's like, I just wanted to be on a winning team and be part of something and just keep playing. I wish we had more people that went less specialization, more into two and three sports, even though we've had a lot of great success stories from kids who have specialized, um, even though, you know, we can, I can I preach and talk about it and fight it as much as possible. But we have a lot of examples of kids who've had a lot of success doing that. But it's pretty cool when, when you see kids who are all state and other sports playing, you know, sports that aren't their best sports, but recognizing that they can help their team and, you know, want to, want to, you know, you know, take one for the team and just be part of it. Yeah. It's really good. Well, I'm sure you and I could do this all day, but uh, let's, yeah. uh, let's kind of stay within the parameters of the, the podcast. Let's go to, you know, instead of doing thanks and shout outs, we're going to do um, new year's resolutions uh, and, and I'll let you go wherever you want. Um, you know, like professionally as an athletic director, as a father, wherever you want to go. Let's let's hear your New Year's resolution. I have a lot. I have a lot of them. But I, I once again, <laughs> focusing on my health is always going to be paramount for me. Um, but I but a couple that I just thought of as we were talking about this, like being present as much as possible. I know that I, I recognize and gauge my good days in this job from how much I'm out and about and talking to kids as opposed to sitting at my desk and working because you know, just like any type of administrative leadership position, the more you're out with kids, the better the days are. You know, I would like to see um, everybody just be more kind to each other and more cognizant of how people are feeling and what they're going through. Because I think oftentimes um, in this culture, we don't see as much of that. I, I think being kind to everybody and each other is is awesome. So that and being present, uh, I think, would be mine. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think my health is always at the top of it as you know, we're both in our fifties. I think um, I, I would like to uh, be more thankful. I think sometimes when you, when you are in that competitive role and always trying to pursue excellence and this infinite goal, I'd like to be, 
I, I verbalize my thanks and appreciation, but I want to get back to maybe writing more thank you cards and and celebrating more people. Um, yeah, I think, that, and, and, you know, obviously always just being a better version of myself. Yeah. Right? Really yeah. yeah. Well said. All right, John. Well, we'll have to get uh, the fifth one on. We got we to get to that. Yeah, that's four. We have to get to... Um, we do have there to. There has to be some kind of an award for that. There has award. to be. We got to come up with, yeah, like uh, maybe we can find, you know, what we should do is we should see if we can pull out, maybe we can re rekindle the Wolfie. This would be the Wolfie. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, we, we miss him. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Something yeah. along the lines of, yeah, passing it around. Because I, I, the, the concept of this show, which has really taken off, has been, you know, pushing out the, you know, this is the front porch of our. Our school district how do we tell our story so more people can be involved in it because yeah. you know as we know it's a it's a it's a changing ever-changing world and um you know we want to be at the forefront of that yeah and if you're not telling your story someone's telling it for you so yeah. on that note john thanks for uh entering being the first uh, noon whistle at the start of the 2025 or 2024 i'm fast tracking myself 2024 year and um, everybody have a great year, and we'll be back on next week. And hopefully my uh, co-host, John, John Anselo, will be off the disabled list. So, John, have a great year. We'll talk soon, and go Elk. Yep, thank you.